front wheel right about here underneath the door and if you get up underneath here and you look there is about i don't know a two inch strip from here to here it's extra wide double thick and it is the jack point for the front of your car you want to make sure on you on your jack stand you get, or your jack uh you get it there because hondas are a unibody frame and if you jack it anywhere else and bend the frame on the front end you will actually total your car it's a big no-no obviously i'm not a mechanic by uh any certified means but you don't want to jack your car up wrong and so with that being said i just wanted to run you through uh our tool list so we've got our three ton floor jack it, it can just be your standard factory jack here's an overall view obviously the lug wrench to remove your wheel and if you have a hard time removing the wheel you'll need some anti-seize for next time to make sure your uh, lug nuts don't get stuck we use a 12 millimeter for the brake bolts and you'll actually need a 19 millimeter wrench which we'll show you later our brake pads themselves that we got from AutoZone some disc brake quiet to make sure your brakes are nice and quiet and then for uh, your pins for your brake pins a little bit of brake grease right here and just to make sure you have everything nice and clean some brake clean and then we've got our caliper compression tool that you see right here. So we're gonna actually loosen the brake reservoir, open it up before we start the brake job, just set the cap loose like that uh, because we're not actually gonna disconnect the caliper lines. You're gonna see when we do the brake job today, we're actually just doing the pads and we're gonna use a caliper compression tool to slide those calipers back, which will push some of the brake fluid back up into the reservoir. And so you want that brake fluid top loose so that um, it's open as the brake fluid pushes back up the lines and comes back up. So I jacked the car the rest of the way up so the tire is off the ground. And the reason we didn't start uh, jacking it up before Dennis broke the tire loose is because the tire would spin, even though the e-brake set. Um, so we put the jack in place, uh, got it set on the, you know, the brake loose point, and then Dennis broke the lug nuts loose. And now we're going to pull the tire off. And the next step we're going to do is we're going to put that jack stand that you see right there, that yellow jack stand, up underneath the car on a metal point of the body, like up underneath the axle or something, we're going to find a good stable spot for it. Just as an emergency to make sure that uh, if for some reason this was to come down, we would not get crushed by a three ton car. So we've taken the tire off, but before we get started, we're actually going to take out our disc brake quiet. And this comes in little packets or a big bottle. We do enough brake jobs that we're putting the, we buy the big bottle. And we're just going to put, um, I'm going to call it a thin liberal amount. You know, every person who does this, does it a little bit differently um but you just put a little little blob on the back and then you smear it around always wear gloves um the stuff ends up drying kind of sticky tacky like rubber cement um and what it does is it reduces the vibration against your caliper so you don't get that hideous noise of um grinding on your brake pads so if you've ever left the shop and they're like oh it's just got to wear in a little bit or whatever um they probably didn't use enough or um, didn't use any uh, disc brake quiet, which like I said, it's not required. You're just using using your hand to smooth around. The reason we're doing this before we took off the, uh, or started taking off the pads is because we want it to sit up, uh, set up as, cause it'll get sticky tacky. So that by the time Dennis is ready to install it and it sits in there, um, it's ready to dry. Cause it dries in about 10 to 15 minutes. So here we've got our front driver side brake. Here is our rotor, here is our caliper. We are gonna be going to this particular bolt with a 12 millimeter socket and ratchet. So what happened is this was just moving. This particular bolt was moving and I, as I was loosening it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a 19 millimeter, put this right here Hold it, make sure our ratchet is on loosen. And get this out of here. Oh. 
So the bottom bolt is already off, but it will not remove or will not pivot up. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna take this 19 millimeter, slide it along here. help it work its way loose is what he's trying to help you do because it'll pivot up as you see it was nice and tight on that rubber that we installed that disc brake quiet now he's sliding those pads back towards himself the front one's sliding out the back one remember your orientation because there's a clip on the bottom underneath so if you look at that back one that top that piece right there on the top so you'll have two of each in your brake box. So you wanna make sure that you put the right ones back in place. And so he's just putting that back down so it's not hanging out up. So what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna remove this top bolt right here. And this is actually the right thing to do. Um, what we would do years and years ago, um, just to do a very, very quick brake job was just remove the very bottom one, pivot it up, and just go ahead and replace the pads and uh, push that, push the piston back on the caliper, put them back together right away. You get these done very, very quickly. But the right thing to do is you're actually gonna remove both the bottom and the top bolt right there. And these are our, our slide pins because these will actually need to be lubed up. And once you lube them up, it's just better. And it's, it is the right thing to do when you are doing brakes is to make sure your slide pins are nice and lubed up. So when you buy a new pair of brake pads, they give you new brake hardware, which I am replacing the top one right here, but I actually ended up removing the, the top brake hardware and putting the old brake hardware on the top one, using the new one for the bottom, because the brake hardware was just not right. This was actually giving us quite a bit of trouble reinstalling the new pads. And so with using the older brake hardware on the other one, um, the top one, should I say, we were actually able to get the brake, brake pads in without issue. So just make sure you replace them if it's compatible with your new hardware. If it's not, definitely leave it off and just use what you have on there. So I pulled both the pins out, wiped them off with a rag. I bought a big thing of the brake grease. Um, it comes with a nifty little brush but you're just gonna apply a nice liberal amount all the way around. You want it to be very, very... I always put, honestly, a little extra dollop on the bottom. I wanna slide it up in the boot. You don't wanna get too much on that you can't put this back in and get the seal properly, but paint the whole thing, you guys. It's your brake parts. You want them well lubricated. You don't want them dry and grinding. So this is the bottom one. Stick it right here, wiggle it right in. And then use my thumbs, it went right around, use my rag to wipe off any extra that came out. And you'll see nice and free spinning. Do the same thing with the top one that I cleaned off real good. You want to get all the old grease off. Stuff is thick and viscous, but it's meant to last, right? Brakes, brakes run your car for a significant amount of time through heat, through friction and you want to be safe on the road. So this is going to go in the top. I'm just going to slide it right back in the hole. You hear that? I'm going to make sure it's getting a good lube in there that's got enough around it. One hand, I was able to push that seal all the way around. And now it's not grinding. It's not making noise. And it doesn't feel bad, which is important. So Dennis has picked up the caliper. He's actually going to put the top pin back in and uh, make sure that top bolt, not pin, I should use the right word, bolt, um, is in so that we can, can compress that caliper. But he wants to make sure that we're not putting undue brake stress on that line. Last thing you want is a cracked brake line because then you have to replace it. Then you have to re-bleed your brakes, which it's a whole nother kettle of fish. So you'll see him holding the nut there and tightening that up. And it's just going to be easier to compress that piston, which we're going to do next. So Dennis is going to compress the brake piston. That tool you see him using, we got at AutoZone. 
for 10 bucks. You slide the flat part against the back side of your brake, loosen it out as far as you need. And then you see that little cup there, it goes flat against the edge. So as you're tightening it down, it's pushing it in. And we've already got our brake reservoir already opened up. So we're not putting any undue stress on that line. So that fluid, that brake fluid that's in there is gonna rise from us pushing this in. And the reason we compress it is because the new brake pads have a lot more meat. They're a lot thicker. The reason that caliper is all the way out is because we have um, realistically gone through like 80% of our brakes. We'll do a comparison at the end of this video and show you the before and after. I don't think it's much, but it's a little bit uneven. Which might mean we need rotors in the future or we might even have a caliper that wasn't wearing evenly, probably due to those pins not being done well. So you wanna be careful as you're going in, you don't damage the inner seal. Uh, Dennis is pretty close to having it all the way compressed, so he's gonna get where he wants it. And then loosen it back off. And that's going to allow him to slide that over. He's also getting rid of the extra uh, disc brake quiet that has built up on there. And uh, We're gonna replace I'm, gonna give, I'm gonna give him a new glove here in just a minute. So we're actually gonna use disc brake clean, which is kind of like a, um, it, well, it's not kind of, it is a cleaning chemical. It's, it's kind of like a rubbing alcohol, very solvent type situation. And we're going to spray it on the inside and outside of the rotor, as well as a little bit on the caliper to just make sure we're getting it clean. We spent about five minutes making sure that, that seal right here underneath this metal ring was good. Um, you see some edges of that's got a little red on there. We actually had a whole bunch of red on here from about the top to about this section if you look back in our videos and pause it and it was because we'd put that disc brake on uh quite wet and it transferred and you want to make sure that this the seal can always expand this way and so you want to make sure you're not damaging things we'll lean back here you probably should be wearing gloves when or not gloves but uh goggles when working on cars at all times i do own a really couple nice pair of dewalt's um, Dennis is literally just cleaning that all up. Let it dry. Let it dry. It's air dries really quick. And we're going to pick out our brake pads to match them up in the meantime. So we'll give that just a second and come back on. So I have matched up the brakes, old to new. And you'll notice this pad, the old one, has that metal clip right here where my middle finger is. And if you look at this one, it has the same thing. These both just have a set shim. So they're matching as well. Um, I'm actually going to have Dennis pick up these two and compare them so you can see how much wear we had on our brake pads. Um, and the reason that we chose to do this was because our car was starting to make a little bit of noise. And so if you look at how, how much meat is left on these pads, these are the same pads that came off that we're putting back on. So they're worn down more than halfway. They do still have a little bit of life left in them. We could have left them on longer, but I don't want to risk going metal to metal and having to replace my rotors. My rotor is in good condition. I don't have any kind of a shake or a wobble. So I just wanted to do pads today for 25 bucks. Put the bottom one in. So this is the outer one. We're gonna put the very bottom one in first. I don't know if you can see where it's gonna notch. Yep, I've zoomed right in. Right there. See the top slid right in. So when you're getting them in and the hardware is new, you're gonna find that you can't like push one side in and tip it. You have to get the stop top or the bottom started and then kind of slide it evenly because it's very thick, tight, new hardware. So I'm actually gonna start on the top and keep it out towards the outer edge. And uh, once I get the top in place, then I'll get the bottom in place and then I'll push it in evenly. And if you get it kind of crooked, you'll have to slide it back out and start again which is what I just did, because I slid the bottom all the way in before I got the top in, which is not what I want to do. And there you go, both pads are in. You'll see that they both have disc brake quiet, and Dennis is going to slide this caliper down, rotate it, because it's already been compressed back, it'll sling down over both the pads that are nice and tight. I end up 
pushing on this. Look down at the bottom where his finger is. He's compressing the bottom caliper slide a little bit. And then he's gonna take the bottom brake bolt and tighten that up. He's gonna make sure both the brake hardware pieces, both the brake bolts, top and bottom, are good and snug. He's got, I'm gonna hold his 19 millimeter wrench for him so that he can make sure that the back doesn't spin. And then he can tighten that bad boy up. So he gets it good and snug and then about a quarter turn. Same thing on the top. I'll stick the wrench right here to keep this front pivot slide from spinning on us. And he is going to give it a quarter turn, make sure it's good and snug. Not even a quarter turn, it was yeah. already tight to begin with. Turn. And then your brake pads are done. We're gonna repeat the same process on the other side and we will have done pads for the whole car. So we're gonna do a rear brake inspection on our 2007 Honda Fit. This is the rear jack point right there. It's about three inches, two and three inches down from the body line. It's a double walled, um, thin platform. We use a three ton jack with ours. Um, so we're gonna just take it up, break, take off the tire, uh, take off the drum or the outer portion of the drum and inspect the shoes to see if they need to be replaced. And uh, hopefully not, but we'll see. So in order to get this outer drum off evenly, come down here you gotta get two bolts and you tighten them back and forth you hear that um Dennis is gonna have a link in the description of where you can buy them on Amazon um but I believe it's eight by 1.25 I believe that's what it says but, believe it or not these were I think from like a wall mount kit for a tv and we've just got a 14 millimeter just Going back and forth on these, tightening them up, but you can see they're actually starting to loosen because they won't just come off easily. Um, as much as you think they would, they will not. And that's because the shoes have expanded up into the drum. Um, but it beats the heck out of the old system of beating your drum off. This one is much easier to do. So this is what my brake shoes look like. I'm gonna grab out my box and compare the new shoes I bought and see how much meat is on them. I have a feeling just looking at these. They look good. That they look good, but they don't have much meat comparatively what's in the box. But we'll at least give them a clean. So Dennis is spraying these down with uh, brake clean, removing all of the dust. You can just see my driveway turning black right there. With all the dust, he's gonna spray the inside of the drum as well. Clean that up, make sure that it's not having any problems um also you just it didn't look dirty but you see how much black is coming off there that's literally just brake dust we had bought new shoes like a year ago thinking we needed to do rear pads or rear shoes and it turned out we needed to do front pads so um Dennis is going to put them side by side and compare them but I'm like 95% positive that we won't be replacing our shoes today because Yeah, looking at the meat on that, there's more than 50% of those shoes left. They're not near the squeak pad, the squeal pad indicators at all on this side. And if we look over at this side, same thing. They're, they're probably... 70? Somewhere between 50 and 70. But your rear braking is about 10% of your car on this car. So it takes a long time to rear for the rear shoes to wear out. Most of it's all front because it's a front-wheel drive car. So we finished our brake. Uh, pads on our front inspection here and replacement and we had loosened the brake reservoir to begin with now I'm gonna pull it off my cap completely here and show you guys That if you pull this out, you'll see my my fluid is actually a little bit more than full I'm actually above my fill line. I was down below my minimum before my shoot my pads were replaced um, That's a good indicator if you're if your brake fluids getting low that you need to replace your pads because there's more travel in your airline so I'm gonna set this down on top of the fluid to where there's not anything there but i'm not going to tighten the cap down i'm just going to leave the cap in place to where there's you know still still air here and then i'm going to go push my foot on the brake pad uh pedal i'm going to push it all the way to the floor and make sure that there's no air in the line and then dennis is going to tighten this cap
So when I put my foot on the brake and I push it all the way down, I push it down and I held it to the floor on the brake until Dennis tightened that cap. And then after he tightened that cap, I let my foot up and went to hit my brake. And my brake is at the very top. It's very hard. There's no air in the lines. It's not spongy. And this is a neat trick to not have to bleed your brake lines every time when you're just doing pads on your car. Yeah, because initially you're just putting pressure on that piston up against uh, the piston up against the brake pad and just getting all that excess or getting that piston uh, fully extended with the brand new brake pad. So there you go. Got fresh. Um, well, we're at max still and uh, let's go drive it. Thank you for watching indeed. If this helped you out and you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button and feel free to check out any of our other links. Thank you.